Well, the Washington Commanders almost beat the New York Jets, but they lost 30 to 28. Sam Howell got benched, but the Washington Commanders draft pick remains solid, top four for now. I'm going to discuss it in today's video. If you guys are new, please subscribe. I'm under 50 subscribers away from 12,000, so please help me get there. Also hit that like button and the notification bell as well, and let's get into it. And just do a little favor for me on Christmas, hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out a bunch, and I would really appreciate it. So let's get started. So I, for a second there, really thought we were going to end up winning that game, but the Jets clutched up. Trevor Simeon led them on a game-winning field goal drive, and I know some people are very, very against winning, or, or sorry, very, very against rooting for your team to lose. And I get that. Like, even at times, I was like, okay, like, let's come back a little bit. Let's make this a game. But at the end, I was strongly rooting for loss. And here's why. No one on this coaching staff is going to be back besides maybe an assistant or two. And even then, you know, I don't know. Rivera, going to be gone. Eric Bienmi is going to be gone. Uh, Nate Katzer was, aw- like, the special teams was awful today. He better be gone. And then the front office, Marty Herney, Martin Mayhew, those guys are going to be gone. Most of those other guys are going to be gone. So no one that's contributing is going to be back. A lot of the players, you know, the free agents, they're probably not going to bring back a lot of those guys. You know, the quarterback, Sam Howell, they benched him back to back weeks. I think it's going to be really tough for Sam Howell to be the franchise quarterback. I really do think so. It's just for a new GM to come in and see what's happened the last half of the season. I know it's not all on how the offensive line's been bad. And at times and you know the receivers today dropped like three or four of his passes and one of those you know led to a pick and another time Curtis Samuel slipped and that led to a pick as well so Howell was not good today but let's keep it real his weapons were not helping him as well but you look at the difference between him and Brissett and how the offense looked back-to-back weeks it's very very telling and you can say whatever you want about the defense playing prevent it was the middle of the third quarter like They were still playing to play, and the commanders did whatever they wanted on offense with Brissett out there, except for the last drive, and they just ran it three times in a row. They ran on third and 10. They weren't trying to score. I mean, they might have been trying to uh, to tank, Uh, but Brissett looked good, 10 for 1,300 yards, one touchdown, and John Bates dropped a touchdown by him. John Bates is awful. I mean, he's... You know, seems like a nice guy, but you can't be dropping pass like that. Uh, Terry, three for 50, made some plays, uh, had a 29-yard catch with Brissett. Logan Thomas made some plays, also had a drop pass that led to an interception. Jahan had some plays. I think he also might have had a drop, but he also had a really nice catch. And then Chris Rodriguez had a really good day, 10 carries, 58 yards. I, I really like Gibson, and he did have a touchdown, but Chris Rodriguez had two. I'm fine next year if they don't bring back Antonio Gibson and, you know, Chris Rodriguez and Brian Robinson are their two running backs. Am I fine if they do bring back Gibson? Yeah, but I think Chris Rodriguez has shown some really good things these last couple weeks. But how uh, Rivera said after the game that they're going to be evaluating early this week who's going to be starting quarterback. I don't know who it's going to be, but they almost won because they took out Hal. So I think that's telling a little bit. And I know people still really like Hal, but at this point, guys, I think it's very, very unlikely Hal is the starting quarterback next year, just because you look at, you, you think about it, right? We're going to have a top four pick, maybe even more. If the Bears lose today to the Cardinals, which I think right now they're winning, but if the Bears lose then we will move up ahead of them. Yeah, they're winning. The, the Bears are winning 7-0 right now. We want the Cardinals to win. But if the Bears, or if the Cardinals win one more game and the Patriots win one more game, we'll likely go ahead of both of those teams and we could sit at number two or number three. If we lose out, we're at minimum going to stay where we are, which is a number four overall pick, which gives you the chance to maybe take a quarterback like Jaden Daniels or take an offensive lineman like Olu Fashano or take a receiver like Marvin Harrison. It gives you a lot of different spots or you can trade back a couple of spots or you can trade up a couple of spots. It gives you a lot of you know different possibilities. It also, it also gives... It makes your GM spot and your head coach a little bit, but your GM spot a lot more attractive when you have the number two overall pick, number three overall pick versus the number eight, number nine overall pick. It really makes a big difference. And this game, I mean, I'm not even really talking about the beginning. That was like, I don't even know what to say in the beginning of that game. I mean, the interception has started off and they let, you know, 
a wide open touchdown or what's his name i think it's jason brownlee yeah that's his name and it was just ugly and then they have the false start on christian holmes and then terrell burgess the leading pro bowl uh, vote getter somehow you know he, he just gets blown up and then tressway gets his punt blocked and then uh someone's i think that's when they scored they scored another touchdown i don't know who it was there and it was just so so ugly man the special teams today tree castro fields had a false start which let or uh, encroachment which led to a touchdown drive special teams was atrocious i mean byron pringle dropped a kickoff and the you know starting field position was really bad uh trustway had a bad punt it was not a good day for special teams it was not a good day for special teams at all and jameson crowder had a really really good return and then he just drops like he just lets the football go uh joey slow was fine four for four on extra points again trustway wasn't great byron pringle had a six yard kickoff return defensively honestly i know they gave up 30 points but they weren't ter- i mean there was definitely some drives where it was really really bad but I mean, considering the field position the Jets had, they didn't play poorly. Klee Hudson had a pretty good game. Wouldn't mind keeping him around as a... He's a good backup linebacker, maybe. Cody Barton had an interception. Dave May was playing. Quan Martin was bad. Uh, Percy Butler got hurt. Deron Payne got hurt. Came back in. Terrell Burgess played some. Kendall Fuller, I thought he played pretty well. Cam Curl made some plays. Also got beat a couple times. Jonathan Allen, I mean, I guess he had three QB hits. So some guys made some plays. Benjamin St. Jude's out with a concussion. You know, praying for him because, you know, as much as he struggled, he's still... You know, he, he's still on this team, and you got to root for him. And he's had concussions in the past, at least two. I think this is his third. So it's never good to have those concussions stack. So hopefully, I mean, he's, he's likely out for the year. And there's only a couple more games. Why rush him back? But it, it's unfortunate. It also, it, you know, really upsets me that Emmanuel Forbes didn't play any snaps before that. Like, he's your first round pick. Why the heck are you not putting him in? He should be playing 100% of the snaps. And that is a, you know, big indictment on him that the coaching staff that drafted him, I mean, the coaching staff slash front office that drafted him and their coaching, I mean, I know they pretty much know they're gone, but they're coaching for their jobs and they're, they're benching him. They're benching him. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, as much as I don't like for, I mean, I didn't like the Forbes pick. I I like Forbes as a person and I think he could be a good player but as much as I didn't like the pick they haven't put him in a good position to succeed and you know that it's continuing right now it's continuing especially the development um, of him one thing though his hands I, I know that wasn't the easiest interception to make but it went right in his hands and he misses one for a guy that was supposed to be a ball hawk he has not been that at all in his rookie year but uh, that's the absolute least of our worries right now is Emmanuel Forbes' hands. But hey, the draft pick is looking good right now. We're going to be at number four. And depending on what happens in these games, if the Cardinals win, which I guess I, they just lost the ball. So it's looking tough for that. But if the Cardinals somehow win, we're going to move ahead of them. And if the Patriots somehow win, we're going to move ahead of them. So we're rooting for the Patriots big time big time rooting for the patriots today and the cardinals but if they both lose we just need to root for them the rest of the way but if we lose out which we're not beating the 49ers we're not beating the cowboys when they're trying which they will be trying we will have at worst the fourth overall pick which again puts you in position to get an elite player and a top pick doesn't always mean you're going to have a best, you know, a great player, but it puts you in better position too. It also gives the opportunity to trade back, get some assets, which they can do as well. So that's why I was strongly against the Commanders winning this game. And you know, I'm a big John Kahn fan, but like he was, you know, yapping on Twitter talking about how like you know it doesn't, you know, yeah, you know, draft order matters a little bit, but. It doesn't matter that much. And, you know, he was getting, you know, grilled in the comments section. And I think rightfully so, because it does matter. What does this winning this game do for you? Nothing, nothing. It would be different if you have a young quarterback who goes in there, is balling out. And, you know, it is what it is. They win the game and their draft pick goes lower, but their young quarterback helped them get that win. That's not the case. The young quarterback was the reason, one of the reasons they were losing the game. And again, not everything on him, but it's getting harder and harder to 
not blame Sam Howell for these you know, lackluster performances by the offense when Jacoby Brissett comes in and balls out. So that's just kind of my take on the whole situation. Uh, yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new. And again, enjoy your holidays. Today's Christmas Eve. Tomorrow's Christmas. I don't know if I'll have a video tomorrow. Maybe I'll have one late in, late in the day if you guys want to watch one, but I might just take the day off. And again, would really, really appreciate you guys hitting that subscribe button. It would really mean a ton trying to get to 12K before the end of the year. Peace, guys.